On Arcade Arms, we take some of the most deadly video game weaponry and we forge them out of metal and stone and dragon's blood. And we take those weapons and we smash the crap out of things. In this episode, we are going to the world of Eorzea in the game Final Fantasy XIV to see how the Dragoons wreak havoc with the nearly impossible to obtain polearm, the Guy Bull. No, I did not say the gay bulge, you friggin' jerk. It's a legendary weapon. Show some respect. Before we build it in the real world, let's see why it kicks so much ass in the game world. The world of FF14 takes place on a planet called Hydaelyn, uh, in a realm called Eorzea. Dragoons are uh, a type of knight specifically trained to battle against dragons. The Guy Bulg is the ultimate weapon for the Dragoon. Uh, basically, your role is to strive to be able to obtain it, to basically defend Ishgard from the Dragon threat. The Guy Bulg itself is almost impossible to get. Some of the trials you have to endure are pretty tough. It is not only just uh, gathering the pieces to help you know, the uh, blacksmith reforge the, the ancient weapon, but then you need to start taking on uh, very tough challenges against the uh, hard versions of the primals. You actually need the Guy Bulg to be able to even fight the hardest dungeon in the game. We needed a legendary polearm. So we came to Minnesota, because well, that's what everybody does. We found Craig Johnson at Arms and Armor, who have created tens of thousands of medieval weapons. Just like this one. Check it out. Oh, God. My name's Craig Johnson, and I'm production manager at Arms and Armor. We're a small company that does armor and weapon reproductions from historical periods. We're after something that looks great, but when you put it in your hand, it feels like a tool. It wants to do something for you. So on the start of the project, we had to take several different elements and try and create the piece in a way that is going to be something functional. So we're using these digital snaps, the artwork from the game, as in a sense, and trying to proportion out exactly the sizing and structure of the piece. One of the challenges with this spear was the length. How long is it in the game? This is my weapon. I call it overcompensation. And so when we have something that could be, you know, 12, 14 feet long, and you have a spear like that, that's really a pike. You had a huge weight disparity going on there. So we started out with some plate that would be hardenable. We created our, our points and our fins and our hooks. Those we would lay out in the shapes we had decided in that planning process earlier. And do you normally cut them out all on one piece or all or yeah, we individually? Would, we would lay it out like, a, like you're cutting cookies. Uh, and then we will come in with a torch and we'll just try and cut on the outside of that line. This gives us uh, you know, good shapes to work from, not a lot of material to move around if we have to. Um, the points on the ends, we did some shaping and forging to those. It must be getting pretty hot in there to be burning metal. <laughs> That's about 1,200 degrees right there. So we lay that out and we can see how we're shaping here to create that piece for the spike on the top. If you want to come over here and turn this. <laughs> I can make fireworks. Okay, we're doing it. And we'll get ready to do that. All right. Got it. And one of the keys for blacksmithing is let the blower stop before you reach in, because <laughs> then you're not putting your hand in a blowtorch. Then we take those elements and we start shaping them. We take the edges down to create the uh, sharpness on the pieces. From the illustrations we had to work from, it seemed that most of these things were supposed to be edged. The, there's points on this thing all over the place. It bit me about five times in the construction process. And then we take the uh, pieces and we would start assembling the parts. Uh, we had the haft out of the steel tubing and we took different sizes of steel tubing that kind of fit together like a puzzle to create a bit of more three-dimensionality for the piece but keeping the weight down. So how tall is this piece? It's about eight foot, three inches. Eight, eight feet. Well, I wouldn't say it's nearly double me, but it's really close. <laughs> who, who is tall enough to wield this thing? Is it, is it made for like your general human? Is it for Rogadin as it may be? 
No, this would be the size of a pole arm for a lot of medieval pole arms for regular humans. I'll pick it up. <gasps> Dragons beware. So to demo this weapon, we needed the closest thing that we could get to a real life dragon slayer. And it's not easy to find a polearm expert, but we did. He dresses up in full plate armor and renders people unconscious. I'm Brad Shavi. I'm one of the co-founders of the Armored Combat League and USA Knights. What our sport is, is men that look like me, salty dispositions, steel weapons, full armor. It's MMA, Greco wrestling, and a street fight all wrapped in one. My specialty is fighting a heavy seven pound weapon that puts people to sleep. We are here in the demonstration demolition hall where Brad is going to teach us how to wield the weapons of a dragoon. You are the expert on pole arms. Walk us through this weapon. <laughs> We're seeing a massive weapon of destruction. When I see stuff like this, my heart starts moving and, and pumping and I want to start doing some violence. I love the look at this. Um, when, whenever you look at a weapon and you, and you adjust what it's going to do in hand-to-hand -hand combat or medieval combat, you look at what's the strengths, what are the weaknesses. I don't see any weaknesses with this. This is a killing weapon. This is something for killing dragons and killing trolls and, and doing massive damage. So I already stole your gauntlets. <laughs> I just really, really wanted to see uh, what it would feel like to learn how to thrust a polearm. So... So what you do is, is as you step, you... Okay. Throw your body into it, okay? Oh, this is really heavy. One, two... <laughs> I don't think I can do it that well. <laughs> okay. Now we get to see what it's like to drive the guy bulg straight into the belly of a very unfortunate man. Brad, take it away. Brad, I don't need to tell you that you're a very lucky man to be wielding a relic weapon such as this. It's exceptionally hard to get in the game. There's like a list of 18 or more things that you have to do, among which is actually killing three huge, difficult bosses. So, in order to walk you through the player's journey a little bit, to kind of get you in the spirit of things, we brought our very own Titan. They're in short supply. He's short. Get it? I made a joke. Anyway, what do you think you can do with this guy? So he wasn't much of a challenge, was he? No, not much. To hell with him. We have Garuda now. So the Dragoon is known for their jump and leap attacks high up into the air. Unfortunately, they were not exactly wearing 80 pounds of armor. So we have this ramp. Do you think that you can do a jump attack and solo that boss? Yeah, I can kill that boss doing a Dragoon attack. Let's do it. for the last boss, the Flaming Ifrit! Uh, uh, no. That was amazing, and I, I mean, I felt kind of bad. You're, you're a dragoon, but we haven't had any dragons to slay, so I, I brought you a dragon. <laughs> oh. I feel like I've spent all day in Eorzea just following around this badass and awesome armor and watching me kill everything. And in fact, I've even handled the legendary Kai Bull. So watch us next time, and maybe we'll kill Sephiroth with a fork, but, you know, probably not. <laughs>